Welcome to JTV. Today I'm going to show you how to test a diode using a standard digital multimeter. Safe and accurate testing of a diode requires the device to be out of circuit. The type of diode I am testing today is commonly called a hockey puck diode. A diode is like an electronic switch. It can be turned on when rated voltage is applied, commonly around 0.6 volts for a silicon diode and it allows current to flow in one direction and blocks current from flowing in the opposite direction. When checking the condition of a diode or transistor junction, a multimeter is the preferred instrument versus an analog voltometer, or VOM. The VOM can give widely varying readings and can drive undesirable current levels of up to 50 milliamps through the junction. Many brands of digital multimeters have models that include a diode test function. Today I will be using a Fluke 233. I will turn on the multimeter by setting the dial to the diode test function, indicated by the yellow diode symbol here. On the Fluke 233, you will notice the white symbol here is for capacitance and not diode testing. Since the symbol is yellow, I will push the yellow button here to change the setting of the multimeter from capacitance to diode testing. This diode test function will send a current through the semiconductor junction and then measure the voltage drop across the junction. A good silicon junction drops between 0.5 volts and 0.8 volts. For this hockey puck style diode, the polarity is determined by the diode symbol on the diode itself. Other hockey puck style diodes may have a flanged end. In this case, the cathode is on the side of the puck with the flanged end. A hockey puck diode will often require clamping or compression in order to conduct this test. This is because the actual silicon device is sandwiched in between the metal discs that make up the conductor surfaces or pole faces of the diode. There is no mechanical bond connecting the silicon device to the discs. The compression force required for the device when installed in the actual application is usually stated in the manufacturer's specifications. For the purpose of doing this static test, a minimal amount of clamping force will usually suffice. My clamping grid consists of a hold down toggle clamp, a couple flat metal and fiberglass plates. The flat metal plates are being used to keep the force of the clamp even across the pole faces and prevent the clamp from creating undesirable marrying or denting the pole face surfaces. Do not compress the disc more than the compression limits of the diode. The fiberglass plates will ensure that the poles of the diode are not shorted by some conductive path in the test jig. Now that my diode is ready, I will plug in my leads. The red probe should be plugged into the appropriate positive test terminal on the multimeter, and the black probe should be plugged into the common terminal. Now I will place the positive probe on the anode and the negative probe on the cathode. In this case, I'm looking for a voltage drop of about 0.4 and I'm listening for a short beep. This reading indicates that the diode has passed this portion of the test. Now if I were to see an open or short circuit, this would indicate a bad diode. An open diode appears on the multimeter with the same indication you would have with the probes not touching anything. The OL on the display indicates open leads or no continuity. A shorted diode appears on the multimeter with the same indication you would have with the probes contacting each other directly. The point zero 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 on the display and the long continuous beep indicates a zero voltage drop. A shorted or open diode clearly indicates that the diode is bad. For the second test, I'm going to reverse my leads. I will place the positive probe on the cathode and the negative probe on the anode. I should get an open reading indicated by an OL on the display like this. This reading indicates that the diode has passed the second part of the test. Any other reading indicating a voltage drop or short would reveal that the diode is bad. Static testing of a diode using a DMM is limited and the only certain test results are open or short, which indicate the device is certainly bad. Passing results may not accurately determine that a diode is actually good. 
The DMM is most likely not able to simulate the application conditions such as current load or voltage levels. A diode that fails in the actual application environment may very well pass these limited DMM static tests. Regardless of these limitations, static tests like these are very helpful during the process of troubleshooting electronic circuits. Diodes and multimeters such as the Fluke 233 along with thousands of other products and services are available at galco.com.